I can now give you such an in-depth workshop guide. We have taken over the entire world, we have stabilized the global economy, and we have wiped out pretty much every other faction. Just so that I can now buy workshops in every single town in the whole game and show you exactly which workshops are going to work the best for you. There will also be some hints and tips on what to look out for and which towns to buy workshops in based on how your game is currently going. So please stay tuned and you will learn all of this and more very very shortly. We are starting off here in the cold north and I have just finished purchasing the best workshop in each of the seven towns initially owned by Sturgia. As you can see some of them do a lot better than others so I would strongly recommend a smithy in Varnavapol and a wood workshop in Sabir. The others aren't fantastic, they have been fluctuating, some of them were doing better than others. A tannery in Balgard isn't too bad and at the end of the guide I will collate all this information and let you know which workshops are the best overall. But if you would like to see all the workshops for specific locations, then keep watching. And now we arrive in Vlandia. There are eight Vlandian towns, and I've left Oxhall off of the list because Oxhall was just terrible. It was so terrible for income, no matter what workshop I built there. So we have got probably your best bets are going to be breweries in both Rovolt and Provent, and potentially a silversmith in Ostakan. I know a lot of people say that an olive press in Jacalan is going to be really good for you because there's like three olive producing villages around there, but honestly, the olives sell for so little that no matter how many olives this town has, this does not go over 200 dinars. So these are the three workshops that you want to focus on if you're building up your kingdom around Vlandia. And now we get to the lands of Patania. I have also included Epicrotia in this list purely because there are only five Patanian towns anyway, and there is quite a few empire towns to get through. Turns out Patania is crazy profitable and you should definitely get some workshops in and around Batania. Look at this. This is insane. The only two getting less than 300 are pottery in Penconop and wood in Car Banseth. And even then, a smithy in Marineth is getting over 500 dinars a day. This is crazy. So, yeah, if you're making your kingdom around Batania, you should not struggle for workshops and money. A side note here for everyone as well, this obviously is very late on in the game, so my character has a few perks that increase the production value and quality of workshops. So if you're just starting out, your workshops probably won't be getting quite this crazy amount of money, but this guide will still be showing you exactly which workshops are more profitable than others. So ratios and percentage wise, this is still going to apply to you, it's just the figures might not be this crazy initially. We will now be going through the Empire. This isn't going to be done in a very specific order like Northern and then Western and then Southern. I'm just doing the towns in an order that makes sense to me to reduce traveling time. I've started with these seven towns here towards the Southwest of the Empire. And if we go and have a look at the profits, there is a lot of grain being produced. So brewery made the most sense for quite a few of the towns in the empire. And as you can see, some of them are doing absolutely fantastic. Earlier on in the guide, I did say that I'd probably rate anything over 300 dinars profit. But honestly, at this point, I'm thinking it may even be over 400 because some towns make some crazy money. Please bear in mind as well, there are a few other external factors that it's very hard for me to control during this test. So there will, of course, still be fluctuations such as bandit hideouts they can pop up anywhere at any time so around the southern part of the Kazate, unless i spent hours going around the map dealing with every single bandit hideout that had popped up some areas may be slightly less profitable than they would be without this volume of hideouts that said it shouldn't affect the results too much and now we'll proceed on to the next lot of empire towns Okay, we've just finished setting up the workshops in the north and the east of the empire. Let's go and check our productions here. Definitely not as profitable as the other places we've witnessed. However, this brewery in Saniopa is fantastic. This is personally one of my favorite workshops and workshop locations in the game anyway. And it brings me onto a really nice point about the location of the town that you're building in. So you may have a town where the village production seems absolutely perfect. And in theory, it should be making loads of money. But if it's very 
very out of the way, such as like Teal, Ravel, Ostakan, it won't make as much because caravans and villagers and armies even will be traveling to these towns much less, which is why even though Saniopa doesn't have perfect village production and positioning. Positioning of the town itself makes this really profitable and that's why you find that quite often people recommend places like Poros, Lycaon, Phycaon. They're all right in the center of the continent. So of course there are exceptions but usually you'll find the closer to the center of the landmass the more profitable on average your workshops will be because they get visited by traders much more regularly. Now let's move on to the bottom part of the empire and then we'll come on to the Kazate and the Asurai in just a few minutes. And we're now back with the remainder of the empire workshops. I've also gone for Husen Fulk as there are eight Asurai settlements and I wanted to be able to do them all in one go so we've added this to the last of the empire settlements along with these few here and as you can see the breweries in Vostrum and Phycaon are doing absolutely fantastic along with the brewery in Hussan, and also the wool weavery in Lycaron. The Nustica and Onera, not so much. But basically, what we are finding here is no matter what town you go to, nine times out of ten, as long as you pick the right workshop, there are some absolutely fantastic options. Something else I haven't touched on yet, that obviously you'll need to keep in mind with your own playthrough, is the fact that war can impact these towns drastically. So depending on the faction that you have joined, depending on the factions you are at war with, take this guide and pick out the towns that you're quite certain won't be going to war anytime soon because how much money the workshop makes directly corresponds with the prosperity of that town. So obviously towns with much higher prosperity are gonna make much more money out of their workshops. And when war is involved, the prosperity will plummet rapidly, especially if it's being besieged a lot and if is changing hands even more so. Right, let's now move on to the Kazate lands. Well, this has certainly put a spanner in the works. I was just on my way to Markeb, just about to get my next workshop for the next segment of the guide, and we are dying. It just popped up and let me know that I am about to die any day now, which is awesome. <laughs> so I may not be able to get the guide finished with this character. Luckily, we do have heirs. So if suddenly my party size and all of my money and everything else changes mid playthrough and you all think, whoa, 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 is this a different playthrough? What's happened here? It's because I died and we're playing as one of our sons or daughters. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, we've just had enough time to buy all of the workshops that we need in the Kazakh territories and leave it a couple of weeks so that the profits can start rolling in so there's an accurate reflection of profits, just like we have with all the other workshops in this guide. I think we're probably just about to die any second. So let's have a check of our profits and see how they're going. Not too bad. There's nothing crazy. There's nothing in the 400s or 500s here, but they're all very solid, 250 to 300. The wood workshop in Autengard is actually doing phenomenally. Again, these will be going in the overall list at the end of this video so that everyone has a snapshot of, depending on where you are in the world, exactly what workshops you should be buying where to make sure that you've always got a nice supply of money coming in. Now let's wait until our character dies and then we will pick this up as either our son or daughter and finish off by checking out all of the workshops down in the Asurai territories. See you then. We have died and actually taken control of our brother Nathanos. He is already 58, but I couldn't bring myself to choose one of our 20 year old sons and daughters with zero skills when we could have this absolute badass. So yeah, we've died and let's finish off this guide now, shall we? And here we arrive at our final few settlements down in Assyrian territory. I'm not really sure why Kuyaz is pulling in zero. Everything else, however, looks about right. I did assume that the two breweries in both Sanala and Asgard would do the best by far, as they both have three grain-producing towns. The breweries in Razak and Assyria are also doing quite well. I guess, uh, just put beer. Just put lots of beer in every single Asurai town and you'll be pretty much golden. Now, with all that said, I'm gonna collate together all of the best towns for you and we'll take a look at what we've got. And we have come to the end of yet another Bannerlord guide. This is probably the bit most of you have been waiting for. For those of you that watched the whole video and saw all the hints and tips I was littering throughout the workshop segments themselves, thank you so much. It truly helps out with YouTube recommending our channel to other people when the whole video is watched. And now for everyone that's here, I'm gonna give you a rundown of the top two workshops for each faction based on my findings throughout today. So firstly, for Sturgia, we have a wood workshop in Sabir and a smithy in Varnovopol. For Vlandia, 
we have a brewery in both Rovolt and Provence. In Batania was a smithy in Epicrotia and Maranath. The Western Empire were breweries in both Amitatis and Zeonica. For the Northern Empire, we had a brewery in Saniopa and a wood workshop in Argaron. Moving down into the Southern Empire, we have two breweries again in Phycaeon and Vostrum, respectively. Then over on the east towards the Kazaic land, we have a wood workshop in Ortengard and a smithy in Makeb. And finally, if we move down towards the Asarai, as you've probably already guessed, we have two more breweries in Asgar and Sanala. This has come as a big surprise to me and probably to most other people as well, as a few patches ago, when I made my first workshop guide, wool weaveries were very prominent. However, now of the 16 workshops, I think 11 or 12 of them are breweries. And then we have a few smithies and a few wood workshops. So essentially, what we have learnt today is Calradia runs on beer. <laughs> That's a continent I am I am okay living in. With all of that said, I hope this helped you all today. Please let me know if you disagree with anything, if you have other experiences in your playthroughs, more than happy to listen. As you know, I do my absolute best to respond to comments no matter how old the video is. It's starting to get a bit harder these days. Now that we're reaching that year mark and there are a lot of videos, some of them are quite a lot older, so I do apologise if I don't get to every single comment but just know that I do read them all and I hope that that will never change. Thank you all so much to every single person in this channel. I've probably left it way too late in the video and most of you have tuned out anyway but if you are still here and you aren't subscribed it helps out tremendously and thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day everybody and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.